it's time for a good old-fashioned Fashion Fail Friday. We have some hideous gowns, some terrible outfits, and of course we're covering Meghan Markle's recent fashion fails. Hey everybody, I'm Beeps Kelly, welcome back to another video. Let's begin with Gillian Anderson's Golden Globes dress. Now if you missed my Golden Globes video, I will be sure to link it for you up here. And this one I saved out specifically for a fashion fail video, and if you already know, then you know exactly why. But if not, it is simply because it has been embroidered, for whatever reason, with vulvas. But let's set that mess aside for just a moment and take a look at the silhouette, the shape of the dress itself, because it's actually quite nice, and like, she looks lovely. Until I found out what it was embroidered with, I thought it looked quite nice, but quite plain. The silhouette here is really beautiful. Her styling is quite nice, except for the purse. I really don't like the purse because it really matches nothing. It's not tied in anywhere. I just don't think it goes very well with this look overall. But the dress, the necklace, the hairstyle, the earrings, even the makeup all look spectacular. The dress looks very well made. It looks very nice in terms of the shape and it fitting her nicely. I mean, just look at how perfectly the seams go along the bodice. It nips in at the waist so perfectly at a great length for her. And the skirt is just a gorgeous, gorgeous shape. Like it reminds me a little bit of a classic Dior dress, just very, very beautiful silhouette, nice and simple and sleek, classic design. But then it was completely ruined with the embroidered anatomy. This dress is made by Gabriella Hurst and it took 150 hours to make. The skirt, even though it's a tad wrinkly, does look great. The embroidery just completely destroyed the potential of this dress. It is Vagina Dress 2.0, the first one being Kristen Wiggs. I'll link that video for you as well. But here's why I think it ruined the look. Imagine if it were twig and berries embroidered, perhaps even all over a men's suit piece. A man wearing embroidered male anatomy in such a way would be frowned upon. Riddle me this, why was this praised in the media? Some articles and headlines called it an ingenious dress. I am so confused. Genitalia is genitalia. Male or female, it belongs nowhere in embroidery. There just simply shouldn't be different rules for a garment worn on a red carpet or anywhere being covered in vages or dicks. It just shouldn't be a double standard here. I don't think this should need to be said. I cannot believe this needs to be said. Let's just put it this way. Anatomy in general should not be embroidered on anything. And with that, let's move on to Billie Eilish. Also at the Golden Globes, she was just completely swamped in this ginormous, bulky, kind of frumpy outfit. This is like an oversized sort of suit style outfit that just came across as looking sloppy and messy and I'm sorry to say kind of ugly. Even the socks are a really awkward color. They're like a coral orange that have some sort of a sheen to them or something or they look really old. I can't quite tell. Can't really find anything that I think looks good about this outfit except maybe her makeup looks fine. I just feel like this particular style, this oversized really dramatic silhouette, that's not very flattering to her as an individual would be much more well suited to like a photo shoot, an ad campaign, a music video. It's a costume. And in this setting of the Golden Globes red carpet, she ended up looking silly. It's just ginormous. It's eating her alive. And it's just kind of uncomfortable looking as well. When doing something oversized, I find it to be way more successful when you do just one element as oversized. For instead, we have just bulky, bulky, clunky, huge, unflattering. Next we have Cara Jade Myers in Rodarte. Now Rodarte seems very LA to me in their aesthetic. I don't love everything they make. Some of what they make leans into costumey, but sometimes they make something absolutely beautiful and spectacular. But this is not one of those times. This otherwise decent start or base to this dress was completely ruined by two features. The first being the huge stuck on oversized flowers. They are flowers, I zoomed in. They look like they could be feathers from afar, which is extra strange, but they're supposed to be flowers, it would appear upon zooming in. And it also looks like there's some pretty hefty shoulder pads underneath there. This is making it look like she's shrugging her shoulders up and it's erasing her neck altogether. So she looks like she's just shoulders, face, no neck, in existence at all. And it just looks awkward. 
The second thing ruining the look is the sleeve length. I think this is in part because of these giant shoulder flowers. It's making it look like the sleeves are then too short, but I think we would have had this problem with the sleeves even if it weren't for the shoulder flowers, but I can't say for sure. It's worth the benefit of the doubt here, but it's making it look like the sleeves are too short for her, like she's in a dress that's too small or her arms were just too long for the dress somehow. That's the effect that this is giving in combination with the flowers and the shrugged up shoulders. It's making it look really strange in the sleeve, which means overall that this looks very unintentional. So the sleeve length looks unintentional and the shoulder flowers are erasing her neck, making it look like she's shrugged up and they're just too much. They're too overwhelming and clunky. So that all together ruined an otherwise very nice looking dress body. It's a beautiful color. The sequins are very interesting. This sort of dark iridescent effect that they have is really pretty and something unique that we don't always see. And the rest of the dress throughout the body looks to be fitting her perfectly. So it's such a shame that this happened up here and in the arms because from the chest down, it really flatters her nicely. Now let's address this most requested outfit. The One Love Bob Marley movie premiere in Jamaica with The Meg. This was reported as a Carolina Herrera silk taffeta floor length maxi skirt and a basic spaghetti strap square neckline top or bodysuit. I have gotten a lot of messages about this that Carolina Herrera's CEO has come out and said this is what this outfit was actually supposed to look like and that it had a matching top and things like that. I have not, despite get it, dedicating quite a bit of time, I have not been able to find actual primary sources of this happening. So I am not sure. If you have it, please feel free to email it to me. My email is in the about section of my page, but I can tell you this much. It certainly doesn't look like these were made to go together, but that really doesn't matter because we're just gonna take a look at whether or not the outfit worked for her. Let's start with the positives. Her makeup this evening looks really nice. I'm just going to say for sure, her eye makeup is a thousand million miles better than the really dark eye makeup that we have seen her do in previous times. I have an entire video about why the dark eye makeup was a bad choice for her eye shape and her eye color, and I will link that for you if I can find it right here. Skipping the dark shadow on her eyelids specifically and throughout her crease helps to bring her eyes forward a little bit. She has kind of deep set or like recessed eyes and they're slightly hooded as well. So when she wears dark eyeshadow on her lids, like we've seen her do previously, it sort of makes her look, eyes look even darker and even farther set back and even smaller. And I noticed right away that her eyes looked brighter and when I zoom in, you can see her eyelids have no dark shadow on it and that is why. So she was able to accentuate her eyes better than in previous makeup looks by eliminating that dark shadow and letting her eyes come forward a little bit. Her hair is not my favorite. We have established the center part is not necessarily the most flattering, but it does go okay with the outfit. Just having a sleek and simple bun makes sense for this occasion. So I think that that is fine. As for the skirt situation, it does have a positive, and that is that it is creating the illusion of a little bit more of a waist, a little bit more well-defined waist because of the volume that the skirt has. It has plenty of volume beginning immediately at the base of that waistband, which does help to give the silhouette of a more well-defined or smaller waistline. But that is where the positives stop. As for the negatives, holy canola oil. This looks like she got carried away with the body oil here. She is wet, shiny looking, and not in the like sweaty sort of way, not even in the like dewy sort of way, just in the she slathered herself in body oil before showing up to this thing. She looks slippery. I would have skipped that, especially for something where you're going to have flash photography aimed at you. you. You don't necessarily want to look slick. That's why when on camera, you use a little bit of mattifying powder or things like that to not look too shiny and have that flashback happen. There's flashback happening all over the place because of that, I would assume, body oil. Could be any kind of oil. Regardless, it's no matter. She did too much on the body oil. As for the square neckline, I'm not a huge fan of it. She has broader shoulders and a boxier torso, boxier frame. So having something that is also boxy, having just this straight across and tiny, tiny straps of the spaghetti straps is 
accentuating that to an extent. It's kind of mirroring that, creating a parallel line across these wider shoulders and this sort of wide square neckline. Something with a wider strap is really beneficial to break up that shoulder line just a little bit in terms of bringing balance. So many people get the wrong impression that I think broad shoulders are a bad thing. They're not. There's lots of benefits to having broader shoulders. For Meghan Markle in particular, her combination of proportions are broad shoulders, with a short waist, short torso, and a lack of a well-defined waist. So having those broader shoulders without much waist definition or length to help it dissipate, so to speak, throughout the overall frame makes it really accentuated and really prominent to the eye. So this particular neckline situation did not offer her the balance that she could have achieved if the straps were wider or if she had a different shape of neckline. A v-neck bodysuit would have been much, much more complementary to her frame, or a cowl neck spaghetti strap sort of a situation would have been better. Something that has a little bit of draping fabric here would have been really nice. Perhaps even something with sleeves would have been beneficial. Because by bringing some degree of softness to contrast the broadness and squareness of her shoulders and torso. She really would have benefited from a different neckline in this situation and perhaps even a different strap. Now, thanks to the skirt's sheer volume, she did gain some of that balance back from the sort of widening upper body that she has going on here. Look overall is very dominated by the chest because there's just no other focal point. The skirt is black and even though it has a bit of a sheen to it, it's not enough to draw the eye away from the chest area here. It also wasn't particularly complementary to her bust area, and unfortunately, paired up with this particular skirt, the top ended up looking really cheap. Because the top and skirt do not go well enough together, they don't match closely enough. It's like as if you have mismatched whites. It's the same sort of a thing with mismatched blacks. If there were a third element in a third sort of texture, sheen, level of shine, or color, shade, so to speak, of black, then it would have just been a tonal outfit. But she doesn't have a third element here, so it just looks like mismatched blacks. And the top, next to that much more expensive looking skirt, ended up looking really, really cheap and bringing down the look a lot. The skirt itself is way too long as well. Now, on the red carpet, you can wear things that drag along the red carpet, particularly for award shows. Things like the Oscars, Golden Globes, those types of red carpets are for the ball gowns. They're to display magnificent fashions. This particular situation and really any movie premiere that you go to, you will not see very many ball gowns. There are some, especially like a big headliner of a premiere or like the first premiere to a really big production, you'll see some ball gowns for sure. But you're more likely to see things that are a little bit more cocktail dress vibe or like something you might wear to a party than ball gowns that you might wear to a ball. And this skirt gives the vibe of a ball gown. If it were midi length or just simply hemmed a little bit more, it would have fit in better for a movie premiere. But overall, I think the volume of it is still a bit much, which leads me to my next point. Despite the look and the skirt especially, having potential if paired up with something else and hemmed a tad could have been a success. It was decidedly not the right occasion or venue for this style of outfit, in particular the skirt. She was clearly very overdressed. Literally no one else was in any sort of voluminous skirt or dress such as this. This film premiere in particular seemed to be populated by people wearing something much less elaborate, especially in silhouette. We saw lots of people in like pantsuit sort of things. The men had their top buttons unbuttoned. No one else was wearing something quite as elaborate as this. When looking through the pictures of this event, I saw not one other person in something that I would think it had an element of ball gown to it, the way Megan's skirt did. It ended up making her look really silly, and it was one of four major etiquette mistakes that she made. Not dressing for the occasion, it makes you stick out like a sore thumb, but it also can make other people feel uncomfortable. It can make other people think that they're not dressed well enough or nice enough. It's just not very polite to wear something that's way overdressed or way underdressed from what the occasion would call for. And movie premieres such as this, we're not talking Oppenheimer here. We're not talking huge flagship tent pole sort of big deal Hollywood movie. We're talking a lower caliber 
of movie premiere here simply because it's not one of those huge premieres where they're pouring millions or into the movie and its publicity. So a movie premiere in this sort of category would definitely be more cocktail dress vibe at most. Now, this is a fashion edition, but while we are on the topic of the Meg at this event, I just have to say, I was extremely distracted by the next etiquette fail that I witnessed, which was when she was going to sit down in the seats. So she was in like what appeared to be a really normal movie theater with the fold down seats. Like we don't even have those in a lot of places anymore, but she was in those like fold down seats that are kind of sometimes they're like lower than you think and stuff and they're not always the most comfortable or easy to sit in that's for sure but wearing a huge skirt like that made it way worse because when she sat down somewhat ungracefully the skirt was just like whomp and had this big huge balloon effect up around her and it looked so awkward and terrible but before she was sitting down she kept sweeping her hands along her backside over and over just using her hands to sort of, it gave like a wiping motion across her backside to gather her skirt. And she repeatedly did that before sitting down and it poofed up anyway. And that is because she did it wrong. The correct way would be to place your hands at your sides and gather the skirt into your hands, pulling from the backside. So you kind of pull the slack from your thigh area towards the front and then you sit down so that your hands are not hovering around behind you in that sort of emotion because it's just less than flattering. It does not look good to be doing that, brushing the bottom area of your body. Whether you're trying to get your skirt gathered or not, it's not a good look. So that is why you hold your hands at your thighs and sort of pull the skirt to the front of you in a much more graceful sort of a way which also prevents the big whoosh that she had of skirt fabric ballooning up around her and sort of like exploding out. It also prevents that because you're holding the skirt still in the front of you with your hands and it will not poof up around you. She also kind of had her elbows out when she went to sit down. Like it was just the most awkward thing I've seen in a while. Speaking of elbows though, the third etiquette mistake that she did was having her elbows out like the entire time she was there. When she was doing the red carpet sort of a thing, now whether or not she was invited on the red carpet were setting aside, she had her elbows out. They were really prominent and a part of that was because they were like one of the only focal points of her outfit, but it was also because of the way she was holding her arms. And we've discussed this with Megan before. She is one of the rare examples out there that we can see of someone holding their hands in a position that causes their elbows to stick out and never learning to correct it. When you clasp your hands at your belly button or higher, your elbows are naturally going to stick out a lot more because duh, they, they have to. And you can pull them in, but then you look kind of weird, especially from the side. You look kind of strange and it makes your hands like come up or be held out way far in front of you. And that is poor etiquette. Everybody knows that. You're taking up more space than you need to. You have your elbows out. It's kind of like putting this like barrier or bubble around you. It's kind of reminiscent of this body language wise. So you want to avoid that when you're trying to have good etiquette and be polite and look poised and graceful. And the big key is super simple. It's clasp your hands below the belly button. You click, you can clasp them at your belly button, but then you need to let them drop. You need to hold them below your belly button. You will hardly ever see Catherine, Princess of Wales, who is a really good example of good etiquette and proper etiquette, holding her hands up very high for very long. She does sometimes, of course, but rarely is it like this for an extended period of time. Usually, especially if she's going to be photographed in any given moment, she will hold her hands lower, well below the belly button area, because it simply allows your elbows to stay closer into your body. It looks better in photographs. It takes up less space and it's just simply more polite looking. The way Megan holds her arms and her elbows sticking out just ends up looking really, really awkward. And the mistake I noticed she made in terms of etiquette was the pointing. There was lots of quick pointing happening at various points in the footage that I saw. She pointed up at Harry all quickly at one point. She pointed several times to random things when being shown to her seats. And pointing is poor etiquette 
for many reasons. One of which being that it can be considered rude. Another is that it tends to look bad in pictures and video. It can give you a rude or bossy impression no matter how kind and normal you may be being in a given moment. On camera, pointing never works out well. Also, rapid motions like this give the impression that you're perhaps annoyed or nervous. I can imagine if they are crashing red carpets or doing photo ops that were not requested or just showing up at a film premiere uninvited or unannounced, perhaps, disrupting the flow of the red carpet, for example, if they were doing any of those sorts of things, if. I could imagine that they might feel a bit on edge or a bit nervous. Even somebody who's really, really selfish or self-centered can get a bit on edge when they're doing something that they think they may be called out on because it puts them in defense mode and they're ready to fire back at anybody who might call them out on whatever shenanigans they're trying to pull. And even if they were well-intentioned, even if they were invited, if Harry and Meg were the nicest people ever, they no longer have a liaison the way they did when they were with the royal family. They no longer have someone leading them through the situation, having pre-planned and vetted the situation beforehand. There are no surprises when you are part of the royal family. So some of this stuff would be coming as a surprise and an awkward surprise at that, especially for Harry and also for Meghan to some extent. Because in the absence of a liaison, somebody who's coordinated all of this, you do have surprises, you do have aimlessness and perhaps nerves. But let's move on. Another outfit from Meghan Markle that I have not yet critiqued on my channel is the commercial. The super cringe, super terrible, coffee commercial that she did where she couldn't even get a fist bump right. Now, that sounds really harsh, but honestly, this was just a tad cringe. The headlines were really unf unfavorable of this, very much saying that it was very beneath her and that it was sinking to a new low. Like it just was not received well. Even the fabric between her face and the phone was strange. It just seemed not well thought out not really thinking how will this be re received. Perhaps it should be a bit more polished. I don't know. We're going to talk about just the outfit here. It was, in short, a terrible option for her. She emphasized her boxy and short torso in this outfit in a really pronounced way. The outfit would have been much better off without the French tuck of the shirt, which created a focal point of the waistline and made it look even more out of proportion than it is. The jeans also may have been better if they were like a straight leg rather than this skinny jegging because it just accentuated the long, thin, sort of lanky looking limbs. Having a straight leg pant or a straight leg jean would have helped to bring some balance to her overall figure. But regardless, the French tuck was probably the cardinal sin of this outfit. Now, if you do not have a very well-defined waist, a French tuck can help to give the illusion of a well-defined waist. If you're particularly apple-shaped or you have a bit of a tummy, a French tuck can help you to look more polished and less like frumpy or something in certain tops that feel a little bit overwhelming or bulky. However, this does not work if you also have a short torso because you will inadvertently draw attention to that short torso with the exception of when you are wearing lower rise jeans or lower rise pants. If you're bottoms are low enough rise, you can get away with a French tuck, even if you're short torso. But if you're short torso and you're wearing higher rise jeans like she is here, the French tuck is just going to accentuate and emphasize the short boxy torso. So in this case, on these proportions, this did not work. It is really the combination of proportions that determine whether or not these rules will work for any given person. And unfortunately in this situation, it was a big fail. Now let's move on to the Palm Springs International Film Festival, which brought us a handful of fashion fails. Harry Mulligan was wearing Balmain, and this is probably the least bad of this video. I love the skirt and the peplum, but the shoulder is just way too much for her here. It widened her upper body and combined with the bustier, it just made her look ginormous up here. It's drawing all the attention right here, making it look really broad and clunky and chunky. Not in a good way. She has really nice balanced proportions, so this was kind of unfair. It could have been a really awesome look if they would have just toned down the shoulder width a tad for her, and also perhaps if the necklace hung a little lower to sort of draw the attention down to the bustier rather than up here where it was kind of in line with the shoulders and keeping you sitting right here visually. Because you wouldn't necessarily want to keep the eye resting at this broad, exaggerated, padded shoulder line. Emma Stone was wearing Louis Vuitton and these are the fanciest jammies you ever did see, I swear to it. 
these look like real snazzy jam jams. The giant cuffs on the coat are making it look too oversized and too much like a frumpy bathrobe. And the split tie is adding a little bit of visual noise, sort of a messy look there. But I think the silk shirt, especially if the tie was tied in like a bow, I feel like could work on its own, paired up with different things. The shirt looks like nice, but the rest of it just is not working at all. The pants also remind me way too much of pajama pants, especially paired up with the bedazzled robe. It just looks like jam jams. Also, an updo would have been way better choice for this because it's just not quite polished enough to work here. It literally looks like pajamas. Eva Longoria wore Ashi Studio Couture, and this looks like spider webs or cobwebs. I'm not loving it at all. It draws way too much attention to the very obvious bodysuit she's wearing underneath as well. So that's giving bathing suit vibes. This just should have been way, way better done. It didn't look nice at all. It was overall really, really messy. It's giving caught in like Indiana Jones, cobwebs, spider webs just not film festival ready. Billie Eilish once again wearing something ginormous and frumpy and not very flattering. This is by Purgatory and it's just a giant unwelcome outfit here. The coat does not need sloppy shirt tails and bulky stiffed oversized skirt. It just doesn't. I know she has a very unique aesthetic and as a musical artist you get the freedom and the leeway in terms of fashion to really like stick to your character and you'll see music artists in costumey sort of pieces a lot more. Like, Think Cher, Lady Gaga, you'll see them in costumey pieces more often, no matter the occasion, as compared to actors who generally will match the occasion a little bit more carefully. But nonetheless, I still think she just deserves something a little less bulky some of the time. Now this is Gugu Mbata Ra in Gucci, and this was last year's BAFTAs, and this was tragic for like so many reasons. First, it looks a lot more like a teddy like bodysuit, like lingerie, than a dress at all, especially paired up with this pastel green outline underneath that's just sort of framing like in the crotch area and whatnot. It just gives that impression. I feel like if that part of the dress were just lower, like more like a drop waist length or straight across, she could have gotten away with it a lot better and it would have given less bodysuit vibes. Also, the opera gloves are not well enough tied in and it's really just unfortunately creating a focal point of the crotch area. We think this one just wasn't well enough thought out for how it will translate as an actual worn piece. But her hair and makeup are so beautiful. She looks beautiful. It's just a bad outfit, a bad dress. Next, we have Hong Xiao in Erdem and this could have been really, really nice. I find this dress to be really, really interesting. It has so much texture to it. It looks like a pencil sketch, which is lovely and artistic and unique. It's something new and different we don't see all the time, but it's still in a beautiful silhouette. It complements her. It's not swamping her or shortening her, which is really nice. So all of the proportions are working well, but those loose white netted opera gloves are a huge mistake. They end up taking away from the look massively. They're just way too distracting between their texture and their ill fit that they're taking away. They're drawing the eye away from the dress, away from the interesting motif on the dress and drawing the eye straight to the gloves constantly and they just don't fit in nice enough. I feel like these gloves could have worked with a plainer dress or like a color block dress. And for this specific dress, I feel like black opera gloves that match the belt or even like black and white that match the bodice part and the belt would have been way more successful than these opera gloves. Next we have Julianne Moore in Saint Laurent and this one I don't love. The sleeves or the shrug or whatever this big feathery thing is are just not working at all. They look out of place and over the top as compared to the simple sleek black dress. Also the dress itself is either sitting a tad bit too low or it's just not a great silhouette for her because despite having a necklace, her decolletage is just looking really long and bare. It's sort of like a void up there, just kind of out of touch with the volume from the sleeves and the black dress. It's just not a very cohesive look and it's unfortunately not complimentary to her lovely figure. And finally, we have this Tin Man straight from the Wizard of Oz dress impression. This is Sheila Atim in Prada and I think this was just one step too far. Just taking the vision a little too far. It needed to be reined in a bit. Her pose may also be contributing to this sort of Wizard of Oz Tin Man 
impression here that I just can't unsee. But this silver metallic dress is really, really wrinkly. And of course, it's meant to be wrinkly. But again, as we've discussed, if you're going to be photographed, especially flash photography, wrinkles are going to be accentuated and end up looking unintentional and sort of messy rather than interesting. It works on runway. It works in photo shoots. It works in person. It does not work with flash photography. It ends up just overwhelming the look and creating a messy aesthetic. Pair it up with these stiff looking gloves and it created an over the top fail, unfortunately. Which do you think was the least successful from today's video and which do you think should be spared from the worst dressed list? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a very happy day ahead and I will see you next time. Bye.